I got lots of cats. <laughs> I have a piss girl for a daughter. They are expensive. This is the family we were meant to. How did I pay $5,000 for her? So we're getting into it. Take her to the emergency vet. She's a demon. Hey, it's Mads, and it is my 500 subscriber special. Welcome, welcome. We are talking all things kitty cats in my house. I feel like I just traumatized them doing that intro, so you're welcome. Oh, I think they're all, they're all going back to their cuddle spots. Again, we have construction as our paid actor. What are you gonna do about her? We're gonna miss her when she's gone. Thank you, thank you, love you construction. Today we are talking all things cats, how much money we spend on them every month, how we manage litter boxes in a one bedroom apartment, how we keep them entertained in a one bedroom apartment, how they all get along in their relationship dynamic. So we're getting into it. And also going into stories and how we got them, how the cat distribution system brought them to us. So we are going over everything, which is very fun. But before we dive into the fun stuff, I do want to very quickly say I received a comment on an, a video last Friday it was asking me about one of my tattoos which it used to be on my wrist it's still there asking me what the meaning of that tattoo was it used to just read 88 which I got that tattoo in honor of one of my very close friends uh, she was born in 1988 I'm born in 1995 she got a 95 I got an 88 we like walked in to a tattoo parlor when we were on a girls trip and just kind of got them didn't think twice about it and went about our lives. And this commenter like asked about my tattoo and mentioned that an 88 didn't have a very nice meaning. And I was like, oh, meh. oh, okay. Like I didn't really know what that meant. And then I Googled it <laughs> and it's not a nice thing at all. And so I literally just like got up and I went to a tattoo shop and I had them added eight. So now I have angel numbers. My friend who the tattoo honors is a Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn, which is also the place planet associated with the 888 angel numbers. So I went, great, this is how I'm gonna rectify this. I still get a tattoo to honor my friend, but not have a hate symbol on my body. <laughs> and uh, PSA, Google things before you get them done. Even if it's on a whim, even if you think it's innocuous, just Google, just always Google. Just always type a little quick little Google before you get something permanently inked on your body, okay? That's my disclaimer to you, okay? And also, if you think that that's what this channel is, it's not. No, mm -mm. no. Uh-uh. This is a safe space. This is an LGBTQIA friendly space. This is a BIPOC friendly space. This is an inclusive space. And this is a space where people are allowed to be people. And we do not hate anybody based on religion, race, creed, gender, la di da 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 None of that will be tolerated here. So if that's why you're here, goodbye. I would never like to see you again, thank you. <laughs> Just to be very clear. Uh, let me dive into cats, which is my favorite thing to talk about. I could talk about them for hours. You know those TikToks that are like, what could you talk about for hours? I could talk about Taylor Swift and my cats. Stay with me. It's, it's, it's nice information and you get to know about the kitties. And I'm gonna show you lots of pictures and videos from the time they were babies up until now. Oh, hello. So you're you're gonna get the whole gambit. So thank you again to that commenter. Um, like really thank you for mentioning something. I, I it made me feel so disgusting and gross knowing that I had that on my body. So being able to change it right away, <sighs> a relief. <laughs> Into the cats, okay? So I have four of them, been blessed by the cat distribution system with four beautifully wonderful healthy babies that I couldn't be more grateful for with such unique independent personalities that really get along and we've really like I we feel like this family is a whole unit you know when someone like has their third kid or their fourth kid they go okay yeah this is what the family we're meant to have me and Jordan say all the time, the two of us and the four of them, this is the family we were meant to have. <laughs> it makes us very happy. We feel very whole and uh, I wouldn't want this any other way. I love, I love cats, I love dogs, I love goats, I love sheep, I love all of it. Okay, so before we dive into all the info, I want to introduce you to the cat. Um, let me grab them as I talk about them so that you can associate who's who, okay? Our biggest boy, well, our only boy, but he's also, I mean, him and Linny are pretty much the same size. This is seven. I like to say he's the oldest because I always wanted an older brother. So I like to say the girls have an older brother. He is my best buddy. Hi. His name, when we <laughs> adopted him was Kevin and that wouldn't do. So we went with something that sounded similar, seven. It's a pretty cool name. And he is just like a black cat. Who knows what they are? They're all trash cats, all feral trash cats. So 
so none of them are really breeds. He is a little camera shy. When I'm taking pictures of him and stuff, he's not so bad, but especially when I'm sitting here talking to the camera, he doesn't like it for some reason. I think, I don't know. I think it might be the mic he doesn't like. Who knows? <laughs> but that's seven. And Farah, I'm not picking her up. She doesn't like to be picked up, especially by me. Um, her and Jordan are a lot closer. So they do up ups sometimes and like and she can be picked up in like an emergency situation But I'm not gonna make her mad at me for no reason But she is the other black cat. She's a little bigger and she's the little white tuff and the rounder Eyes she knew I was filming so I have to bribe her with a treat to come sit this one is ketchup eat it <laughs> she is i like to say the older of the two little girls the darker she was like the first one out of the printer where her sister's like that lighter gray her legal name is katya as in katya zonlochkovic she goes by ketchup or catch and then there's the baby this is trixie she is the smallest she's also the baby in the family she can do no wrong she's a sweet baby angel we call her trixie minx minxy tiny booby baby anything that you would like call something small she is oh twinkle toes is what i called her for a while she is the sweetest and her and her sister are just like like calico torty situations and she's the lighter gray of the two okay <laughs> Now that we have a visual of them, I wanna get into like the nitty gritty. The first thing being how much money they cost. And oh my God, they are expensive. I mean, as any pet is, I have a budget for them. The cats have a checking and a savings account because things like vet bills, unexpected expenses, sometimes somebody needs their teeth cleaned, stuff like that. So we put $50 a month per cat into a savings account for them that just kind of sits over. And that goes into like buying a new cat tree or, or vet bills or things like that so that we have money stowed away. And then they also have $50 per month for like small incidentals. So like if, I don't know, somebody needs uh, the, the nail clippers are hidden or they need a new toothbrush or something like that, like little things along the way, or I wanna get them like an extra bag of treats or something, I have a, I have a Flex 50. And then we spend about $200 a month on food and litter to feed the four of them for an entire month. So that works out to roughly $450 a month going to the cats. It isn't always exactly that amount. Sometimes that extra 50 isn't needed. So that goes into a savings or it gets rolled over. Like there's a lot that happens and sometimes there's extra spending and stuff like that. But it's roughly on average about $450 a month goes towards the cats. If I'm looking down, it's because my notes are down here because I wrote notes for this. Oh, I also have my cat mug. Is it gonna focus? I don't know. Cause we're talking about cats. So I figured I'd take out the cat mug. A uh, good question. Cause we live in a one bedroom apartment. We live in a small one bedroom apartment and it's how many litter boxes do we have in this house? One per cat plus one. So we did do that for a little while, The which worked and it was fine. There was nothing wrong with it, but we always found that like two or three of them would go unused every week. Like Jordan would go to do the litter and like they just wouldn't be used. <laughs> like, so when we moved into this apartment a couple years ago, we decided we would try to see if we could get away with three because that really worked like spatially for this apartment. It means that we have one in the bedroom, one on one side of the living room and one on the other side, which is actually what I'm sitting on. This piece of furniture <laughs> that I sit on this cabinet is actually the like litter box cabinet and it's fancy piece of furniture. So it looks cute, but they can have a really big box in here. And that has really worked for us. I don't know if that's because we have two sets and that like the little cats were so little when we got them, they were only a couple of days Days old when we took them in I don't I don't know it just that's what works for us if we have to add more we will add more obviously if something goes wrong or somebody something changes we're down to add them we're, we're not against that and I've never have been but three works so three is what we use I should also say with that Jordan does the litter just about every day like he does a box in the morning, most days, about five days a week, he cleans a litter box in the morning, takes him 15 minutes. He does one of the boxes. That just seems to, to work for the four of them. There's even a, only like one of the boxes only ketchup uses. Like she's the, she uses that box, like the one in the bedroom, she pretty much is the only cat that uses that box and the other three use the other two. They'll sometimes use that one in the bedroom, but mostly it's just catch. And she loves that litter box. So I'm not gonna take it away from her, but that's pretty much her box. And then the other three like the other two better, I guess. I don't know. 
know, but that's just worked. That's what works for us. So that's what we're currently running in this house. Okay, and then tagging off of that, the litter that we use. <laughs> this has been like a roller coaster of a litter experience. We are currently using the world's best litter in the multi-cat bag. I'll put a picture here, I think the side is. We're using the multi-cat, it's the red bag, I think. It's the multi-cat low tracking. It might be the walnut. Don't quote me, I'll put a picture and stuff like this, you know which one it is. But that works really great. We kind of always go back to that one. We have tried everything from the wood pellet, like the, the horse bedding wood pellet, pine pellet situation to like that fancy like uh, health detector litter. Like we've done everything except for clay because I just knew I would never like clay litter and it's not good for them. So I would never buy that. Um, but so we always just end up back at World's Best because it tracks the least and it smells the least. It really, it doesn't get stuck in any of their paws. If you don't want to know this, you don't want to know this. They go, they'll go from the bed to the box and then come back into bed. Like we don't want litter. There's been points in life where I've just had to like throw away sheets. <laughs> because they just get nasty. And this litter doesn't do that. It doesn't track, it's really nice. It does a little bit and it's a little bit dusty, but that's super easy to manage when there's way less tracking and it's all over the living room floor. Now to tackle smell, we do occasionally and with other litters have used that Arm & Hammer, um, like baking soda pet stuff. <sighs> I don't really like, I don't like deodorizing the box. I don't know why, but I don't like doing that or having like scented litter. I'm not into that at all. What I do do is I keep these little, I don't know if you've ever seen these on video, these little jars. I have three or four of them around the house that just have coffee beans in them. And I only first the coffee beans, I don't know, once a quarter. <laughs> and they just like neutralize all the smell. Uh, you don't smell cat pee, you don't smell cat poop. It keeps it, I guess I should be sitting. Keeps it really neutral smelling. And because Jordan does like a box every day, the smell really doesn't build up unless we're like away or something. You come home, you do smell, does smell a cat when you come home. But if you've been gone three or four days and like the cat sitter doesn't do the litter, like yeah, obviously it's gonna smell like cat, but for a day to day, it doesn't. Ooh, okay, so a big portion of their monthly budget goes to food. I have always fed them a wide variety of food to make sure that none of them got picky. <laughs> Cause the last thing I need is to like get them hooked on a food, them love it. And in three years that food be not available in Canada anymore or not be able to be made or for whatever reason, like especially in like COVID times, like I was so grateful that I could just get whatever was available because there was nothing available. Right now they've, they've eaten just about every wet food brand there is that is of quality. I tend to do a lot of research before I feed them, but always do your own. I am not a vet, I'm not a cat nutritionist, so don't quote me. Currently, they're on like a combination three-way of the Tiki Cat After Dark, it's like a special treat. Um, it's Trixie's favorite. So we get some of that. We get a couple, a few cans of that in the Kirkland Signature brand, like wet food combo. There is a fish flavor in there, but it is the only fish flavor they get and I don't always buy the Kirkland so they're not really getting a high volume of that. So I'm not super worried about the mer mercury and using that Kirkland as a supplement really keeps cost down so that we can afford the other higher end food. And then they also in the rotation have the open farm. Yeah, I think it's called open farm. I'll put pictures here of everything. The open farm, both the open farm and the Tiki cat are like premium cat foods, I'm pretty sure. And they're on the more expensive side and like the better quality side from the research I've done, I could be wrong. Again, not a cat nutritionist, just doing my best as a cat mom. So that that's in there like wet free rotation. They also get bone broth, um, freeze dried beef liver, and those little like fish, I think they're called smelts. I get them from the pet store. They're just in like bulk freeze dried, they're like local. I kind of rotate out the topper so it's not always that combination and they don't always get all of them every day. <laughs> I call it soup or when I cook for them, I call it I'm making their soup and I put whatever I feel like is in there. If we've got some leftover plain chicken, it goes in there. If we've got some leftover ground beef, it goes in there. Seven really freaking loves carrots. <laughs> So he gets carrots, <laughs> he really likes them. I don't know why he likes carrots. Like they eat weird stuff, but not as like their everyday meal, but they each kind of have their own like favorite human food and they get a couple of chomps of that whenever we have it in the house. 
I do also keep, this is controversial yet brave, okay? <laughs> I do also keep dry food in the house as like a quick meal and we treat it like that. We treat it like fast food. If Jordan and I need to run out the door or we're late for something, we wanna make sure the cats eat or something comes up and we have to go do something, we can make sure the cats at least have dinner or when the cat sitter comes or the neighbor comes to feed them, I don't wanna make the neighbor go through all this rigmarole roll and like measure and weigh and figure out all this stuff. So I just go give them the kibble, put some water in there, it's fine. I'm a firm believer in all wet food is better than dry food and food is better than no food. So I would rather know that they've eaten as long as they've eaten. I'm happy, <laughs> especially in those situations. They don't eat it all the time. And when they do, it's like one meal, maybe two. And that's fine, because we're doing our best. We're doing what we can. Now that we've covered like really like the basic essentials, like food, litter, that stuff, I'm gonna talk about other like extra essentials we have in the house for them. First being their water fountain. I got this nice big one. They all really love it. I have seen them all use it at one time. I don't think I have a single picture of them all using it or video because they're very, you know, I don't know if you know cats around water, they're very skittish and they're trying to hide and all this stuff. So any sound or movement and they all kind of disperse like gazelles at a watering hole. But they all use that one. I also keep a bowl of water in the bedroom where Linny likes to spend most of her time because she's a little bit of a loner. So I like to leave her in there, leave it in there. So if she does get thirsty, she can have some of that. They also drink out of my cups. <laughs> I am a prolific water drinker and I'm a big jar girl. They'll put their little faces in there and they'll drink out of my cup. They also like to drink out of the shower or the sink. Sometimes I just leave a little of the sink on, go play in there. Ketchup loves to go into the shower after anybody's showered and just lap up all the water. They get plenty of hydration. They're also getting hydration in their food, but that fountain is, I love it. It's so easy to clean, it's easy to maintain, and it's big. It holds a lot of water. I like that a lot. The other big thing we've done in this house is create a lot of levels, a lot of places for them to hide that we can easily access in case of an emergency, but it's also like a good place for Linny who doesn't really wanna be out and about all the time for her to go and hide away and tuck herself and feel safe and comforted. But then also Ketchup who loves to be up high watching people. We've got plenty of ways that she can perch around the house and kind of lord over us. Um, Trixie really loves to get like buried in stuff. So I make sure that like I've got the fluffy blankets on the bed and stuff like that. Um, a nice big cat tree for them that kind of creates a highway in the house. Just lots of places for them to go, especially in front of the windows, which were a big deal when we were choosing an apartment to live in. We always look for something with a lot of windows and not always at the top of the building. I don't like being on the ground floor. I just, I don't know. I just never have liked being, living on the ground floor, but I've always kind of wanted to be in the middle, especially if there's foliage and trees around because it like is cat TV for free all the time that you don't even have to think about. They yell at squirrels. They <laughs> yell at birds, they yell at leaves. It's great entertainment for them. They are all inside cats. They will forever be inside cats. So I might as well give them as much of the outside as possible. And speaking of as much outside as possible, our windows that we have in this old apartment don't have screens. So we actually bought like adjustable screens off Amazon that fit into the window so we can open the windows and they can like sit and perch and yell at things they wanna yell at. They've never pushed against the street screens. They've never tried to get out of them, but it really like allows them to like use their primal senses or something. And I really think it does help with their like level of enrichment. I, now that I've gotten like that, like not the boring stuff, but the like practical things and the logistical side of having four cats in your house. I want to talk about the, <laughs> can we just talk about them and their little personalities and their little stories and their little everything? Do you think that would be okay? <laughs> like if we just like chit chatted about them for a little bit, I just want to tell you about them. Cause I think they have beautiful stories and the cat distribution system, like I said, really like hit home with the four and their dynamics. So I've had animals in and out of my life for my whole life. And I've always been really connected with them and really grateful to have them in my life. And I always knew that I wanted animals. So when Jordan and I got together, he had never had pets and we weren't living anywhere where we could have animals. So it wasn't until I into an apartment, I started looking literally the minute we got the keys because <laughs> I knew I wanted cats. So I was looking and looking and I knew I wanted two and I knew I didn't want kittens. I was not ready for to deal with kittens and I'm a big believer in like uh, adopting older cats or older bonded pairs. Like I, I have this dream of being older and like running a rescue slash like foster program where um, senior animals can come and be adopted or they can live all their golden years with me or animals can be surrendered and I can find them new homes. Like that's my long time goal and dream. So I knew I wanted at least 
something that was harder to adopt. And I came across a listing for Kevin and Sarah, a bonded pair of black feral cats. And I did not tell Jordan they were feral. <laughs> I didn't. They were currently being fostered. They were rescued and trapped from a, some lady, her backyard like backed up onto the woods, onto a golf course. And she had seen them wandering in and out of her yard, not looking well, emaciated, malnourished, mangy, like obviously not being cared for. And they trapped the boy who they named Kevin. And a couple of days later, they were able to trap the girl who they named Sarah, which means that Linny was out there by herself for a couple of days and that's traumatic. Like <laughs> that makes me so sad she was out there without her brother, but I almost cry every time I talk about that because she was alone and sad. She thought he abandoned her. I don't know. I, I wish I could ask them about this time in their lives. Do you know what I mean? I wish I could just be like, so what were you thinking? What was going on for you? I tell them, spill, spill, tell me everything. So they trapped them and they were like in not a bad shape socially, but the, 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 they needed a lot of work. And they had been looked at and passed over by a few different people who just were like, yeah, no. They were too big, they were too old, they didn't want two cats. And also there is, for like a lot, it's this way with dogs too, like black animals tend to not be adopted over animals are like have colored coats and things like that. And that makes me so sad. <laughs> I just knew they were ours and we went to visit them. It was like meeting our soulmates and Seven just kind of sniffed me and the lady put him in my arms and he just curled up and shoved his little face as far as he could into me. He was terrified and I felt bad holding him, but I knew that like, I knew I could help him. And the girl, Sarah then, Linny now, warmed right up to Jordan. And even the lady was like, yeah, she doesn't even do that for me. She just started like, like trying to bury herself in him and we just, knew then and they're like, okay, we'll take these cats home. So we were approved. They did a home visit because we were adopting ferals and we put in so much work. Uh, I have a video here from, I think this is a week into after we got them. This is the most interaction we had gotten out of them. Um, we had not seen them eat. We had not seen them sleep. I sometimes was worried they weren't breathing. The only reason I did they were alive is because their eyes were plastered open all the time. I had heard them and we just knew that it was going to take time. We just knew that they were just going to need our patience and our love and our care. And then eventually about three weeks in, we started waking up and seven would be in the bed. And I would wake up and I would look at him and he would look at me and we would both close our eyes and go, because we would feel them at our feet. And we just knew that like we were making progress <laughs> and that we were gaining their trust. They felt safe enough to come and sleep with us. Like that's a big thing for cats, Google it. They felt connected enough to us. They knew that we weren't going to harm them. And then over the course course of the next six months, they really turned around and Seven and I bonded so greatly. I think I, Linny, the first time Linny let me pet her was around the three month mark was the first time she was with Jordan and I went and I just like gave her a little scritch and she didn't get upset at me. I should say they're not hissers, they're not scratchers, they're not biters. None of them are. They were like stunned, like they wouldn't move. Like they would be like, par they were freezers, they weren't fighters. So they would just be like paralyzed by fear and I gave her a little pet and she looked at me, she looked at Jordan and then she just put her little head back down like she was settled. And I just, it felt so rewarding. Even our relationship now is like progressing. Um, it was just a couple weeks ago, I was in bed and I woke up, I thought it was seven because him and I sleep next to each other. I'm cuddling him and I hear this like roaring of purring on the other side of me and I roll over and it's just Linny and she's passed out beside me, which is just like huge. She either doesn't sleep in the bed or she sleeps inside of Jordan like at his face, like touching him. So the fact that she was like passed out next to me that I could roll over and be like, hi, good morning. And she just hung out there. That was like, oh, she trusted me. She knows I'm not gonna hurt her. Like, oh, that feels so good. <laughs> that is so rewarding when cats are just like, I trust you. It feels so good. <laughs> so yeah, and that really was like the road we were on with them. And then October of 2020 happened. By this point, Jordan and I had left the island for the first and only time we'll ever leave again. And we were living in Vancouver and we get a phone call 
from his mother in a panic saying she found these like tiny little kittens and she doesn't know what to do with them. The SPCA was COVID. Everything was shut down. The SPCA was overrun. They said they, they had no space for them. And if she could take care of them, that would be great. Which was like the point we were at with like animal adoption and, and shelters and stuff. There was just nowhere for them to go. And I said, Jordan, these will help me. I said, Jordan, we have it. I was working in a job, which meant that I worked with the general public every day. I was working at the bank on the front, like the front lines and like the service industry. And it was a nightmare. And a story for another time and I literally looked at Jordan and I said these will cure my depression I said my antidepressants ain't working anymore I want baby and he said okay that Friday we got in a car and we drove to Canwibs and we picked them up our original idea was to foster them but the second I started bottle feeding them and waking up four times a night to feed them there was no way they were gonna go to anybody else they were ours now so that's how we got the littles and we bottle fed them and we raised them isn't that right we raised you from bottles. I think that's why they're so small is they were that I don't think they ever got any mother's milk or attention I think their mom abandoned them They were so small when we got them and area where like the Jordan's mom was walking is like known for being like a Like a feral cat colonies or like people who live there have lots of outdoor cats who they don't spay and neuter Which is so sad spay and neuter your animals, please And it just we just knew that it, no one was gonna be after them and if we didn't take them they would end up in a shelter which were overrun due to COVID. So we took them in and we raised them. And it was so sweet. The big cats, I wasn't even worried. Jordan was a little worried that they, especially Linny, wouldn't like them, but they took to them right away. They were like, okay, this is these are my little sisters. We're in. They never tried to like nurse them, but they would lick them. Or I would catch Linny sometimes like licking their tummies to like help them go to the bathroom after they ate. Like you have to like massage them and stuff. I would give one a bottle, give the other a bottle and have the other cradled and Linny would come and she would lick the baby. It was just, it was so sweet. We raised them and now they're two. So the big cats are six, we think. Those are their origin stories. If you're still here and you're not subscribed, subscribe. But if you're still here and you wanna hear a little more, <laughs> I could talk about that forever. I just kind of want to give you like one story for each of them that like really stands out in my mind or like one quirk. So starting at the top of my list, seven, my gravity, my shadow, he is my sole animal that he sees into me and loves me and I love him in a way that is just, it, it's almost human. The way he understands me is almost human. It's, it's really quite an experience. I've always felt very connected to animals, but nothing like this. He forces me to use him as a pillow like at night I, i've got lots of all these pictures we sleep together all the time at night he started doing this actually pretty recently he will at my head at night and then i'll lift my head up and he'll lay and he'll make a little donut around my head and i'll hear him and listen to him breathe and that's how i'll fall asleep and i'll wake up in the morning and he's there or i wake up in the morning holding him and we're face to face and he'll have his little paws on me and we're face to face like in between jordan and i jordan and i haven't slept beside each other in years <laughs> Seven is always in the middle. That's just where he goes. That's where he wants to be. Him and I are just, we joke sometimes that Seven is my husband and Jordan is my boyfriend. Jordan is my boyfriend, but Seven is my husband. <laughs> you know, like this is just how that works. Like he's just my bestie. I love, and I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I love him so much. And then Linny, sorry, my mic died. I'm hopping back in to the Linny story now. Linny is a weird girl. Okay, she does some odd things from, she will sleep for like four hours, get up, come find you, run at you, and staring. If I have a video of her staring, it, it's hard to get a video of her doing this because it just happens out of nowhere. It just, it just happens and she just, I don't know, she gets this burst of energy. She wakes up and it's like she's had a nightmare or something. She's like, I am blah, blah, blah. Like she just has to scream at you. <laughs> she does that. She also has christened every single house she's lived in since we've had her by peeing in the tub on her first night. She just pees in the tub the once. I, I don't know what it is about the bathtub. She's done it in every apartment she's lived in. When we first got her, within the first couple of days of getting her, she peed in the tub and I went, that's weird, but moved on. Figured she was nervous, she was scared. She didn't know where her box was. She was a scared girl. She was a scared girl. So I figured I'm not gonna get upset at her. And I mean, the tub, pee in the tub. You're gonna pee anywhere in the house, pee in the tub. You know what I mean? And then when we moved to Vancouver, she did it again. She peed in that first apartment we lived in in Vancouver, just in the tub, the once, one time only. She just peed in the tub and went, okay, my house now. And then we moved apartment in Vancouver, pees in the tub, in the tub. 
club. We're just like, okay, well, this is just something she's gonna do. So I actually caught her doing it when we moved into this apartment. We had moved and we actually had to go over the ferry twice in one day because we got the wrong size of U-Haul. It was, it, it was a whole mess. But I, it, I could tell moving stories. I could tell moving stories. <laughs> We've had some moving nightmares. But we were moving in here. We had brought them over first so they could get acclimated and then we brought over the second load sort of situation. The next morning I wake up and everyone's in bed with us, which is really normal, except for Linny. She was nowhere to be found. So I get up and I went to go pee and I hear like the little pee sound. Little pee. And I went, oh, and I pull back the curtain and she's in there pissing. <laughs> Just squat and she's like peeing not at the back of the tub like at the drain like she's using a urinal like <laughs> It's just the weirdest thing. We haven't lived anywhere else So I'll let you know if she pees in the tub wherever we live next because this isn't our forever home We'll be here for a long time, but this is not our forever home, but she's a piss queen. She's a piss girl I have a piss girl for a daughter. I mean, I kind of love it. Honestly <laughs> She's just a weirdo and we love her and we support her and she's everything. Okay, the tiny tricks is an airhead. My goodness, does that girl not have a thought in her head? She has two thoughts, actually. Me, pet, she gets the thought, I must be pet, I must be held, I must be baby, and chew gold. I'm a gold jewelry girl. I'm sure you've seen my gold jewelry. She chews the jewelry. She will come up and be like, oh, can I have a cuddle? Can we snuggle? She's just a little chomper. She chews Jordan's gold necklace, any of my gold jewelry, my earrings, my necklaces, my rings, my bracelets, anything that's gold. She chews holes in our clothes. So we have like systems. If you ever see like clothes hanging over doors in our house, it's not because we want it that way. It's because I can't put things on the ground because she'll chew it. Like we'll come home from the gym and you can't like get dressed from the gym, go and get changed and put your stuff down and then go put, like put it in the laundry. Uh-uh. If it's not holding in your hand, she will chew it. And there will be a big hole in your clothes. So yeah, <laughs> she's a moth. It's bee baby and chew. That's all she wants to do. And then there's ketchup the demon <laughs> she is a demon this cat is wild she does donuts in bed at 3 a.m she does the like demon crawl thing she gets zoomies all the time she's constantly in trouble i find her in the back of cupboards i find her breaking into closets because she thinks there's something in there she wants she'll take things and run with it like she is a demon i've woken up before and she's in my like sewing cupboard and she's chewing on spools of thread like <laughs> she cannot be trusted with anything her new favorite thing is to play in the sugar bowl i have this little jar for sugar it's been out there almost three and i've had this jar of sugar out i use the same jar it's the same jar for my tea for jordan's coffee right it's a sugar bowl and she's just now in the sugar bowl playing with it. She's just a demon. <laughs> She's a, an, a literal demon. I had a shelf with like decor and stuff in the bedroom. I actually had to take it down a few months ago because she started jumping up there and then dive bombing us at night for fun, like just to do it. She's a demon and I love her to the ends of the earth, but she's an absolute demon. She is also my $5,000 cat. How did I pay $5,000 for her? It was about, she must have been about nine, maybe 10 months old. And she decided it would be a good idea to eat a hair tie and a shoelace and it knotted her intestines. Take her to the emergency vet. They, they act, it was amazing. The vets were great. She had like two nights overnight. And it was actually, it was really stressful, but in the end she was fine. And they had knotted her guts. They were able to unknot it without like cutting her intestines or anything. They were able to unknot it and then pull it out. So I actually have, and if you don't want to see it, Look away, it's not, I mean, it's not gross to me, but it may be gross to you. So if you don't wanna see this, like skip 30 seconds. This is her, her little thing. This is it. This is her, the shoelace and then the hair ties in there. You can't really see it cause it's knotted. They like bundled it. When they first gave this to us, I'm gonna gag thinking about it. I made the mistake of, <coughs> sorry, sorry for that sound. I made the mistake of opening it and smelling it. Don't do that. But I'm keeping it. I paid $5,000 for this. I paid $5,000. I'm keeping it forever. <laughs> it's my $5,000 shoelace, my $5,000 cat. I'm keeping it. <laughs> if you've made it this far, thank you. Amazing. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. We will be back to regular scheduled programming. I have a sewing video coming out this week too. So be careful of that. We are diving into more DIY-ish stuff pretty soon here because I have some projects around the house that I wanna get going on. So be ready for that. Thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed this 500 subscriber special. Even though I'm posting this, I have 600 plus subs because you guys just decided that 500 wasn't right. You had to like in 24 hours, give me like 600 plus. You guys are great. I love you so much.
Have a good day. Bye. Bye. I know normally I show you a cat at the end of this video, but I'm not gonna do that because they're all now sleeping and I've woken them like three times. So I'm just gonna put some like videos of them from our time that like didn't make sense in this video. So here's a little compilation for you. What's going on over here? What's happening? What, Bubba? What? Really? Did you miss me? What about you? No, you did? Oh, good boy. What about you, huh? Nice dredging. That was a really good challenge. I thought I was going to run away.